Hello, I'm Johnny Wiggins. Uh, now to begin with, um, my background is software only. I have never taken any classes in electronics or electricity or anything. So, of course, I decided to jump in head deep into the world of Raspberry Pi and embedded computers. This is the Pi kit I got. It's red because it's uh, Chinese, not officially from the UK. The only real difference I've been told is these don't have the FCC or the European CE, although it does say it right there. It came with this nice little half kit that allows me to plug in the cables. There. Ta-da! Now I got this kit came with something really cool. It, came, it comes from Waveshare, I believe. And it comes with a whole bunch of goodies. To begin with, is the DVK511 board. This is really cool. It has 5 volt DC input to give it a little extra power. It already separates out the stuff for the I2C, the SPI, your 8 inputs, and UART. It also has a built-in infrared input, a speaker, uh, one wire, which I currently have a digital thermometer plugged into, and a uh, four digital joypad. Um, the on-off switch is for, primarily for the DC input power, which I made my own cable for. So, it also came with an eight button push button a uh, UART with USB so you can plug it straight to your computer. A uh, flat data flash with 4 megabytes. A uh, real time clock with battery so the Pi can finally have one. And the real time clock is the uh, ITC as, long, as well as this nice guy gives you and an additional 8 port of inputs. One thing to note though is that these are not truly accessible with GPIO unless you install a special kernel module. This also has different pins which is the address, the ITC address and just like you know CHMOD 1, 2 and 4 based on how you have it you can have up to an additional seven of these plugged in, which, let's see, eight times eight, 64 available output and inputs. Very handy. Uh, it came with uh, this little guy. He is a 74 LVC 8T245. And what this nice little guy does is it takes in input voltage and output voltage and it tells it what inputs, what voltage inputs to expect and what voltage to send out. Or, you put this down, this becomes output, this becomes input. Unfortunately, you can't have it both input and both output. But what can you do? Um, it also came with a 16 by 2 blue LED, which I have found a lot of fun with. And it came with a itty bitty 4 inch, I guess. I don't know. I can't tell size. <laughs> anyway, but possibly 2 by 4 inches. Um, resistive, unfortunately, touchscreen. The source code is, comes, is supposed to come on a CD, but sometimes it, it, mine didn't. But the customer service was unbelievable, and they just threw it on Google Docs for me to download. Um, and if you want, I'll put it in the comments below. 
So this is the first kit I got. The second kit was 37 sensors. Um, this is the, the manual. And the manual basically says what pin is ground, what pin is voltage, and what pin is the signal. Um, all of these were meant for an Arduino, which means everything is 5 volt. Sensors and outputs, which makes this guy come in pretty, quite handy. Um, now, of course, the Raspberry Pi does not uh, have analog input support, only digital. But WaveShare, the same guys who make this nice guy, has a analog, digital, digital, analog um, I2C connector, which I have incoming. Um, now the second kit came with a breadboard, which I've attached to a piece of wood. I don't know why, just anyway. Um, it also came with this nice little header guy, which plugs straight into the Pi. Now, they made it so that you can plug in to the Raspberry Pi and a pass through to another one. So, first let's plug in everything. So, I'm just going to plug this in because it's a little hard once other stuff are plugged in. The other cool thing, feature about this is that every I2C card has a female and male connector. So, I don't want to get that in. When you plug in the hardware clock, you can go ahead and plug in another I2C. What else do I need to plug in right now? I guess I can plug in the memory module. Uh, the other thing to note is that with the real-time clock, there is a jumper um, whether or not you want to use the battery or if you want to use the electricity from the board. Okay, so I zoomed in a bit so I can try to show you what all I'm doing. Um, this has two interfaces, one for the touchscreen and one for the LCD. Okay. Um, the problem with the, um, the UART is it does have um, back feed. So if you plug in the computer straight to it, it will try to turn it on, which is bad, okay? So what I'm going to first try to do is show how to turn on and off um, a laser which came with one of my kits. Oh, you can't see that. There you go. So first, we have this. Now we don't need to change the jumpers because we're not going to get, we're not going for sensor input. And it's labeled quite well, you know, which was voltage, um, what, so what, now there's one pin that's going to be left out. But you don't have to worry about that. That's the direction pin. It tells it whether it's going to be input or output. Now, the bottom is going to say 3 volt, so I need to tell it to receive 5 volt. Um, just for sanity's sake, I try to make sure that if I use red, I always use red and vice versa. So here's black. Okay. Now, I don't know if I have to do this, but just, you know, playing with those circuits from Radio Shack makes me think that I have to. Uh, let me see if I... No. There we go. Professional. Okay, so... Before continuing, real quickly... Let's zoom all the way out. Okay. Um, the kit that I got from, uh, I think it's Sun Founder or something. Um, 
move this over here. So it came with a whole bunch of sensor kits. I call these kits because they do much more than just sensing. Um, a lot of these also have um, more than just three pins. Um, so push buttons and whatnot, but these are all five volt sensors. Now there's one other problem: documentation. There is none, or so I thought. But someone showed me this PDF I found on the internet that gives a sample code in C, but for the Arduino. So, everything that I have, um, let's just see a quick example. So this is a sensor to do the checks if something bumps it. And then here's the C source code. Um, for most of these, I don't think it's gonna be that hard to translate I'm going to have to do some tinkering. Alright, so, back to the show. So now, let's take my pointer. And go this to signal. And let's just use brown. Brown will go to my ground. Now the, pit, the cables I have are all one side male, one side female. So if they're a breadboard, you're screwed. So, now let's turn on the Pi. Okay. Yay! And if we look here. It says recovery laptop. Oh yeah, yes, I guess I haven't booted yet. There we go. So that's my backup laptop that's plugged in using Minicom. So here's my laser pointer. So, hypothetically, if I have this script right, it's going to turn on the laser pointer. And then all I have to do is do off. And it turns it off. So there is the code that just turns on and off the laser. So this is the blue um, 16 by 2 LCD display. And I've written some quick um, C programs that will let me send it straight to the display. Now using the temperature thermometer using it via the one wire. Um, I've created this program which actually accurately tells you the current temperature, time, and date. Now, in order to use the touch screen for this um, you have to undo these two jumpers or else it will never turn on. Now this is a little tricky because the last thing I want to do is bend pins. Okay, so now you're plugged in. Now this 5 volt input I'm not 100% sure I need it, but why take a chance? You never know. Okay, so. Now, I am using uh, Noob's um, 
mainly because I, I like to try out all my experiments on just about every um, operating system just to, you know, sanity check. Because, it, you know, if it works on one operating system and not another version, I don't see a need to continue trying to get it to work. Now the example source code is really crappy um, in that it really doesn't give much usefulness or whatsoever. Just that, ooh, well, ooh, luck it can work. So, then it There we go. Now this is resistive. Um, but as you can see, you know, it can still read it re relatively well. You know, it might be fun to play with. Came with this nice little cheap remote, which I also discovered one's the same way as this other cheap remote. Um, so, let's say I want to push this number. So I have it able to return everything. Um, the other funny thing is, I had it set up so that if I hit the EQ button, I have it set up to go to shut down the machine. So I essentially have a remote control for my Raspberry Pi. There's one other thing that I that caught my attention, and I'm in Africa. We get 12 hours of sunlight, and I was wondering what it would take to run the Pi Solar. Well, I was just playing around um, on Amazon and discovered a thing called Goal Zero. So here we have my Pi with a USB Wi-Fi. Then I have the DV, um, yeah, the DVK511 chip, um, card with the real-time clock and the LCD. So now, all I'm going to do is plug in that. Take this outside or whatever. So here we have the LCD panel put into the Raspberry Pi. So the, the, the soda charger powers the batteries, which charges powers the Pi. So there's a lot of things I would like to do on the Pi, but again, I'm software, not hardware, and I have no education in electronics. <laughs> and there's no uh, Library I can just go down to in Africa, um, and it's not where I live. Um, hope, uh, I don't know, I don't hope anything. Uh, I don't even know who's going to be watching this. Um, but this is just me playing around.